What's going on, Kaz? We've got guests. Time to move. Don't worry. It's not our friends from Langley. I brought him. Made sure we won't follow. Thank you, Big Boss. Call me Snake. Oh, uh, sorry, Big Boss. Listen up. For us, there is no victory. But in revolution, doesn't one triumph or die? We don't do either. feel like a new man. There's no coffee like Costa Rican coffee. So, what brings a distinguished scholar from the Costa Rican government to Colombia? Professor Galvez comes from Costa Rica's University for Peace. You see, over the past year, there have been sightings of an armed group in Costa Rica. They're not ours, of course. Costa Rica doesn't have an army. Correct. Article 12 of our Constitution states that the army as a permanent institution is abolished. The Peace Constitution. You think it's rebels who fled Nicaragua? No, no, they don't appear to be guerrillas. They're far too organized. What's your government's take? The authorities in San Jose claim it's a multinational security firm, hired by the Development Corporation of Costa Rica. Lies, obviously. They're bringing in state-of-the-art weaponry and equipment by the shipload. Where'd they get that kind of cash? I fear La Cia may be involved. The CIA. As you both know, the United States views Central America as its backyard. Even after Cuba, we've managed to maintain a delicate balance with the U.S. And your government can't just give them the boot. We are not allowed to bear arms. Japan's constitution has something similar. Article 9. It says Japan renounces war and can maintain an army. I understand that you and your men have neither state nor ideology that you will fight any foe. Please, you must drive them out of our defenseless country. We come to you, the Militaire Sans Frontières. So, you want to hire us? Yes, as our deterrent. We can't afford to pay much, it's true. But, we can offer you this. A forward operating base. An offshore plant in the Caribbean. Sounds pretty good to me. This place is becoming a mess anyway. Snake, we need some place we can settle down. The governments agreed to cooperate. Unofficially, of course. A chopper for transport would be nice too. I'll see what I can do. Hold it. You seem to think we're just a pack of dogs of war. Is that right? Yes, that's what I've heard. You're an army without a state. No, we've only left our countries behind. Please, you must help us. If your suspicions are true, force isn't going to do any good. You'll have to find a political solution. The government's hands are tied. Go back to your bosses in San Jose. Tell them if they want, I'll introduce them to a negotiator I know. No. I'm not here on their behalf. So, what are you doing here? For over 20 years, I've preached the virtues of peace at multiple universities. Tonight, I stand before you as an educator. <laughs> this is my student. She came to me to study peace. Her name is Paz. Paz Ortega. 
Paz. Peace. No kidding. That's my name too. Kazuhira. It's Japanese for peace. Pleased to meet you, Paz. Call me... Kaz. Uh... They've got a supply port north of Puerto Limon, a town in La Costa del Mar Caribe. A few days ago, Paz stumbled upon that facility while searching for a lost friend. She was captured. She's only a child, 16 years old. They did terrible things to her, but somehow she managed to escape. Oh. My god. She's Swifana. Her mother died when she was small, and she lost her grandparents in the Civil War. She hates war with a passion like no other. My name is Paz, and I will do anything to protect my namesake. It is my one and only purpose. Please, get them out of my country. Make them leave Costa Rica. Sorry, kid. We know who you are, big boss. That is why we've come to you. I gotta thank you for agreeing to this snake. Man, am I glad to be out of here. Finally, we can leave all that crap in San Geronimo behind. Break into the mercenary business for real. Let me guess. You're doing it for her. For her. For her. For her. Are they still here? Come on, Snake. This could be good for us. They're willing to give us an offshore plant. A place we can finally put down some roots. This is our chance to expand MSF. We don't need a place to stay, Kaz. We're nomads. We always will be. What? You'd rather keep wandering from conflict to conflict? Tools in the hands of whoever's fighting at the time? The second we settle down, who's to say we won't become the warmongers? Listen to me, Snake. We're not mercenaries. We're not a foreign legion. MSF's a business. A new kind of business. <sighs> Look, it's not like we're trying to start a war here. All we need to do is find out who this security company really is. Come on, Kaz. It's pretty obvious that they're backed by the CIA. Wait a sec. That would mean... Our friend, the Professor, is likely KGB. I see. We'd be making an enemy of our homeland. And there'd be no turning back. Gah, this damn thing won't light. Huh? Put on some coffee, Kaz. It's time for a little chat with the Professor. was a heavy smoker. When I got my medal from the Secretary General, he gave me this prosthetic hand as well. But smoking was ruining my lungs, so I quit. I've not had much use for it since. It's quite an honor to meet the legendary Big Boss. That's just a code name the CIA made up. Then perhaps I should call you John. I don't have a name. Stop using that code name you liked so much ten years ago. What about you, comrade? What do they call you back at center? Well then, allow me to get straight to the point. Land as slim as a whip, hot as torture. That's the Chilean poet. Neruda. Central America is the navel of the American continents bridging north and south. 
We want this land. We'll build a socialist stronghold, then use it to split the Americas in two. America would lose its backyard. And with it, its economic production, shipping lanes, and strategic value. We, on the other hand, would gain a base from which all of Latin America would be well within our reach. He who controls Central America will win this Cold War. But it's more complex than that. The CIA's got something else planned as well. What? That is the million dollar question. Big Boss, we want you and your unit to find the answer. Infiltrate and investigate the facility in La Costa where Paz was imprisoned. Learn all you can of their operations. Then, drive them out of the country. <sighs> You're asking us to settle a turf war between the KGB and the CIA? What about her? That was all just an act? Hmm. You mean her words about peace? She was captured, that much is true. But I've kept my KGB affiliation from her. And you thought we'd fall for a sob story? No. I had good reason to bring her along. She managed to escape with her life, but her friend was not so lucky. Why were they attacked? I believe this will help explain. Perhaps they saw something they weren't supposed to. Perhaps they heard something they shouldn't have. A cassette tape? Paz took this during her escape. She says her friend happened to record it by accident. What is that? A portable stereo cassette player. The first of its kind. Ah, I heard they were working on something like that in Japan. Didn't know you guys were too. I believe what you're about to hear will help you understand. What is that? A Quetzal? The Phoenix Bird. Paz's friend was researching birds. She went out into the jungle to record bird calls and stumbled upon this. So? So what? Now it gets interesting. Go home. Boss, voice print analysis confirms that this voice is indeed that of the legendary hero and criminal, the boss. Wh what? The other hasn't been identified. Female in her 30s with a British accent. The song playing in the background was a hit in 1973. What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your mentor? Your mission or your beliefs? I... I am loyal to myself. Boss is alive in Costa Rica. Who's that? As I understand it, she was your commander, fought by your side. And that you killed her under orders from the CIA. Thus surpassing her to become the hero known as Big Boss. Well, what'll it be? Will you take the job? Snake, it's gotta be a trap. So you still can't turn your back on your country. Then I suppose you won't need this. Wait! Snake? I'll do it for the girl. For Paz. Okay. 
for peace then. found a radio. It's got a circuit that reverses the audio phase. Let's switch frequencies from time to time, just to make sure we're not detected. I found a map of their bases. The cargo's heading from the marshes west towards Irasu. Nice going, boss. Kaz, this place is full of film badges. Dozens of them. Film badges? Like the ones used to measure radiation exposure? <sighs> the radio man was wearing one. And whoever he was talking to called the cargo Spears. Wait, that would mean... Nukes. They're bringing nukes into Costa Rica. Holy Mother of God. How's that map, Snake? Think you can use it? It tells me where their bases are, but it's just a bunch of points. No routes. I need better intel on the lay of the land. Snake, the professor said he's got the Sandinistas on his side. Said you should get in touch with the FSLN Commandante. <laughs> Do they know they're backed by the KGB? Nah. As far as they know, they're really fighting for the revolution. Whatever the CIA's up to in Costa Rica, the professor wants it stopped. We need to find out what that something is. We need to get ready first, Kaz. Repairs. Working as fast as we can, boss. This place is pretty beat. It looks like hell. But as long as you're with us, we'll make it heaven. No one can bother us here. No state telling us what to do. This is the MSF's haven, our mother base. And with this foothold, we'll back you up even better than before. We're gonna turn this pile of junk into something big.
Shit! No way. What do we do? Sandinistas, right? I'm looking for someone. Mi viejo! Shh! He's dead. They killed nuestro viejo. You're his daughter. Then that makes you his delegado, right? Relax, I'm not your enemy. Cuban. Mm -hmm. A cigar? I'll take whatever you've got. I owe you one. But I prefer cigarettes, you know. How do I look? A little like El Che, no? You Cubano? Colombiano. A photographer. I came to Costa Rica to take pictures of birds. Birds? Yeah, uh, quetzals. You've got no telephoto lens. How do you get your shots? Telephotos for amateurs. It's all in the timing. Oh. Let me smoke okay. too. We can talk until I finish this. Chico! Tell me what's going on here. This place is crawling with soldiers. They don't look like private security. More like hired guns. They're loaded with the latest gear from all over the world. I heard they're a security force hired by Codessa. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Papa Noel. Those guys are UCLA's. UCLA's? La Cia. I saw them, setting up shop in town. They're planning to do here what they did in Chile. If that's the case, what are they after? Whatever it is, it's not us. You don't think they're here to push you back into Nicaragua? Impossible. Too much hardware. Too many bases. Didn't you see? They've got helicopters, tanks. It's like we're in Da Nang. There must be something else. This was our last hideout. The final refuge for El Frente. After being pushed out of Nicaragua and into this peaceful paradise of Costa Rica. Then, El Monstruo attacked. A monster? Y mi viejo. Mi viejo, papá, he was la esperanza, our hope. Now that papá's gone, my sister's la comandante de la revolución. Do not listen to him. Papá was a hero who fought by Sandino's side. I am only his daughter. You need a special talent to become cacique. It takes someone great to unite all of las compas. Sorry to interrupt, but leaders don't choose themselves. Neither do heroes. You carry on his legacy of La Esperanza, and they'll follow you, no question. You think so? My compas trust me, but not one of them calls me Comandante. Amanda! <laughs> See what I mean? El Colibri! <laughs> Survive the fall! Out of my way! 
better for him to die at the hand of a compa and suffer their torture. Stay here. As long as I'm still alive, I might as well be taken. Over here! Find Chico! again. We fought. I didn't want Chico to know. Kept it a secret. Somosa's Guardia chased us out of Nicaragua. Across the Rio San Juan. And we ended up here. The only reason we've been able to keep on fighting... Amanda. The factory. You saw it? The banana factory. A front. It's a drug refining plant. The KGB set it up for us to run. We used the income to buy food and weapons. Mi viejo never said a word, but we all knew. Everyone except Chico. Everything we have. Our weapons. Our compass. He brought it all together. We were going to rebuild our country. Rebuild Nika with our own hands. Even if we had to dirty our hands to do it. But it's all over. We lost our cacique. Papa! I could never replace him. Now they've taken the plant from us too. There's no place left to regroup. No way to fight la revolucion! Here, I rolled you one. What about you? You're going after that cargo? Yeah. Must be important, hmm? Hmm. Looks that way. It looks like it could be nukes. What? Nukes? Madre de Dios. No time to waste. We must get to Irasu. The transport route leads there. It must be where they're holding Chico and my compass, too. Whenever Chico and I argue, he goes off to be by himself. That's why he knows more than anybody about their bases. He... Oh, Chico... You 
pretty worried about your baby brother. This is why I'm not fit to be a leader. Fine. It's a little bit out of my way, but just tell me where I need to go. There's a prison up in the mountains. That's probably where he is. A prison in the mountains. You must do something for me. If you can't save Chico, I want you to ease his pain. End his humiliation. If he gives in, if he's about to sell out his compass, please, at least let him keep his honor. That's a promise I can't make. Why? Amanda, we gave up our homes, but we're still alive. We're still fighting. And there's always another reason to keep on living. Uh, I feel alive again. Amanda, join my unit until you've healed up. Your unit? Yeah. Who are you? Why are you here? I'm Snake. Serviente. Snake? Could it be... the great cacique has come to be us? Can you hear me? MSF here. One for recovery. She's wounded. Acknowledged. Kaz, the cargo on the barge. I was right. It's headed for the mountains. You think that's where they're taking the nukes? I'm sure of it. Let's move. Huh. Who's there? Chico, it's me. Joy. Joy, that photographer. That's right. A war photographer. Huh? I thought you were here for the birds. Yeah, um, the birds of the battle. Whoa! Is that chess? Can I see it? Wow, the same kind of chair used! You can't keep it, kid. Here, have these instead. Those photos! Huh. Oh no, Amanda! She's safe. Don't worry. Are you sure? We're patching her up back in my place. She's hurt? I said, don't worry. It's just a broken leg. Got any cigarettes? Mm. Any cigar, huh? Hey! Not for kids. Chico, do you know where they took the cargo? Cargo? What cargo? Let me rephrase that. How do they get stuff from the coast up here? Oh, that I can tell you. When the cargo gets to the harbor, they first send it up the marshes on a barge. Then, they load it onto a jungle train past the banana plantation and transport it by rail. The train stops here. When it gets to the train terminal past the coffee plantation, they reload it again. This time onto a truck, which disappears into a tunnel heading toward the mountains. Disappears? Chico, what's on the other side of that tunnel? Nobody knows. None of our compass ever got close enough. He's protected by a spirit. A uh, spirit. Yeah, a giant monster. El Basilisco. The king of snakes. No, 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 really, I saw it. I was camping up there one day, and just as I was waking up around dawn, I heard this loud noise. I opened my eyes and saw an enormous shadow. Must have been 30 bara at least. He was walking on legs as big as trees. Where did you see it? At the terminal near the tunnel, but I only saw it that one time. What exactly were you doing there? I, uh, 
Well, me and my sister got into a fight. And you just happened to go camping. You know, their train should be arriving at the place I saw El Basilisco right about now. Is it far? No, really. Go past the coffee plantation, and it'll be to the north. What are you chasing? Hmm. Something that could keep the world in balance. Or destroy it. Huh? I heard that place was a narcotics plant before those guys took it over. But you already knew that, didn't you? Huh. Look, I get it. Even revolutionaries need to pay the bills. Still, must be tough for a kid like you to swallow. You're damn right it is! The route they use to transport stuff is the same one me viejo used to smuggle drugs. They sold the drugs to the Norte Americanos and used the profits to fund the army. They tried to keep it hidden from me. Is that why you went camping? Yes. I managed to sneak into the plant a few times and... I tried to set it on fire. Everyone treats me like a child. I, I, I couldn't stand it anymore. I'm not a kid, I'm 12. Couldn't do it though, could you? <laughs> Chico, growing up means choosing how you're gonna live your life. To do the right thing, you sometimes have to leave the things you care about behind. Parents, family, your homeland. But mi viejo. Chico, look at the photos. Mi viejo. He's gone. But there's one thing you don't ever leave behind. Your memories. Keep them safe. You want to get out of here, Chico? I do, but... Come back with me. Your sister's waiting for you. I can't go back. I can't face everybody. You told them where your compas are. I see. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed of. Pain gets the better of us all. <laughs> out of your misery. What? Any last words? Shoot. You are only going to kill a man. I just wasted a bullet. Don't waste your life. Listen to me, Chico. You died here today. You understand? You're hombre nuevo. A new man. Now, give that new life to me. Huh? Fight with me, little soldier. Show me how strong you really are. <laughs> Dry your tears. Then promise me one thing. No smoking until you get older. Remember, real heroes are never as polished as the legends that surround them. You got it, boss. Uh, Snake is fine. What's that? Ah! Check out the cargo. Notes.
Marcus headed up the mountain road past the tunnel. So it was nukes after all. What now? Their main base is up ahead. I better hurry after them then. But... Kaz, if I don't get moving, it'll be too late. All right. I guess you never did let dangerous assignments or risk aversion get in your way. How do I get inside the mountain? I can forget about the tunnel. Yeah, the tank took care of that. Any other routes? Why don't I let a local expert take over? Snake, you need a way into the mountain? Yeah, got one. Mm, let's see. Do uh, you remember that precinct I was in? In the village, right? Right. Go back to the village and head north. There is a bridge that connects to the mountain road. It crosses over a gorge. That's probably the best way. That's where they brought the nukes. Then the truck we're after should be there. Mr. Kojima? This is the one. The exhaust's still warm. But the cargo's already been offloaded. Just a minute. This isn't what we agreed on. It's too late. The changes have already been finalized. You told me it was going to be a deterrent, that we wouldn't have to launch! I am not arguing with you, Doctor. Our goal is to create the perfect deterrent. That's why I agreed to help develop it. Mm -hmm. However, in order to achieve that perfect deterrent, we must show the world our strength. Three key principles ensure effective nuclear deterrence. First, you must have nuclear weapons. Second, you must never use them first. And third, and most important, if someone attacks you, you must strike back. Unless we prove beyond a doubt that these three principles work in practice, the world will not accept our new deterrent. And the only way to do that is to show them we are capable of actually launching a nuke. But isn't deterrence supposed to stop nukes from being used? Exactly. And so the one we launch will be the last one ever. I won't let you use my creation like that! <laughs> your creation? <laughs> that thing wasn't even your idea to begin with. You stole it, didn't you? <clears throat> stole it? You're one to talk! You got the idea for bipedal locomotion from the communists in the first place! You listen to me, Doc. Keep quiet. Do as I say. Not another word about stolen ideas. Should we succeed here, you'll be the toast of the scientific community. And your name will go down in history as champion of both progress and national security. The hell with that! Doctor! Unless we prove we are capable of launching, Peace Walker is useless as a deterrent. You used me! We used each other. I'll get my old director's job back at headquarters, and you'll finally be able to walk tall among your colleagues. Uh, I won't let you get away with this! How unfortunate. Guess I'll just have to take your legs for myself! Peace. 
peace won't just come to us, Doc. We are going to have to meet it halfway. V for victory. Wait! <laughs> hey, you okay? Don't do it! Snap out of it! Where are the nukes? He's gonna do it! He's gonna launch a nuke! Unmanned weapon. A prototype. I made it myself. Who are you? I work here. Well, used to, anyway. Name's Huey. And who might you be? You don't look like one of those mercenaries. Me. I'm uh, an entomologist. A fighting entomologist? Yeah, I specialize in butterflies. I'm here to catch Ulysses. Ulysses? Huh. I didn't think they lived in Costa Rica. Morphos, maybe? That's it. I uh, need to get some before the Washington Treaty goes into effect. Says here Morphos aren't covered under the treaty. Uh, must have slipped my mind. You sure you're feeling all right? Anyway, long story short, the butterfly got away. So how about it, Doc? Did you make that big butterfly, too? Uh... yes... and no. What was that thing? What are they doing here? Huh. Something tells me you're no ordinary entomologist. <sighs> the nukes were loaded on that machine. The project's entering its final phase. 
project. We use this facility to develop unmanned weapons. Unmanned? Robots. The one you just fought was a pupa. There's also a flying type called Chrysalis, and a treaded type, the Cocoon. There's no need for a human pilot. They can only follow simple commands, though. Why build them here? For the CIA. They invited me here a year ago. That's who that guy was. The CIA's station chief for Central America. Goes by the name of Hot Coldman. Apparently he was some sort of hero back at the height of the Cold War. He's the one running the show. We called it the Peace Walker Project. Peace Walker? A mobile launcher carrying a thermonuclear warhead even more powerful than the Soviet RDS 220s. That's Peace Walker. <sighs> Chico's mess, please go. We did the assembly and field testing here. A walking nuke. I sort of borrowed the original idea from behind the Iron Curtain. The missing link between infantry and artillery. Metal Gear. Metal Gear? But they'd actually need to deploy dozens of them. Coldman needs funding for that. And to get it, he's planning a test, which will also serve as a demonstration for the folks back at Langley. Wait, he's launching a nuke to prove that his perfect deterrent works? In his words, to prove that if someone attacks us, we will strike back. Nuclear deterrence has brought us peace. At the very least, it's prevented another world war from breaking out. But the theory of nuclear deterrence exists only on paper. In reality, there's no guarantee that either side would follow through with retaliation. There's the chance that a preemptive strike could destroy all the missile bases, render them unable to retaliate. But the biggest flaw in the theory is that the decision to retaliate has to be made by human beings. Let me give you a real-world example. Let's say Country X launches first against Country Y. If the people in charge of Country Y are like you and me, they're not going to be able to retaliate, knowing that they're effectively ending all human life. So then the weak link in nuclear deterrence theory is the uncertainty of retaliation. Bingo. And that creates a loophole Country X can exploit to launch the first strike. Which is why we designed the system to be unmanned. With Peace Walker, retaliation is certain. It chooses the appropriate target and launches a retaliatory nuclear strike, every time, without needing human input to make the call. Launching a nuclear strike against Peace Walker is tantamount to pushing the launch button against yourself. It closes the loophole in nuclear deterrence theory, rendering our friends in Country X completely unable to launch. What Coldman is saying is that to achieve this goal, we need to demonstrate that retaliation will be carried out by a machine. He will launch his nuke. And then his version of deterrence will be complete. And you believe him? I believe in peace through nuclear deterrence. Why? My father worked on the Manhattan Project. He put his whole life into that research, and all it created was this illusion of peace called deterrence. And then I was born, unable to walk. I had no choice but to face up to the nukes. But if they do end up launching, it'll all have been for nothing. They've got to be stopped. Where'd they take the warheads? To a base near the border. The final test is five days from now. Where's the base? You're gonna stop them? It's kind of a hike. And besides, there's a surefire way to halt the project. You see, Peace Walker isn't quite finished yet. What do you mean? It's missing one last critical structural component. The AI. It's brain. The reptile pod, the electronic brain I was working on, can only follow commands like, go there, attack that. I guess you could compare it to the human cerebellum. But for nuclear deterrence to work, 
It must function in place of a human decision maker. It needs something to analyze the huge volumes of data coming in and select an appropriate target for retaliation. Hence, it needs the high-level decision-making ability of a cerebrum. A mechanical cerebrum. The hardware configuration is modeled on the human brain, similar to the pod I worked on, but its role is completely different. Where's it being made? A research lab to the north. An AI expert named Dr. Strangelove is developing it. Very hush-hush. Dr. Strangelove? Strangelove was recruited from the States, too. In the field of AI, there's no one better, that's for sure. But man, what a basket case. She hates everybody. Go to the lab and destroy Peace Walker's cerebrum. I'm pretty sure they haven't finished the final calibrations yet. I'll lend you my ID card. It'll get you through security at the lab. Oh, and uh, one more thing. What's this? A letter of recommendation? Yeah, it's, um... It's from me to Dr. Strangelove. Don't read it, okay? So what will you do now? I... I'm done with science. At this rate, I'm probably already halfway to hell anyway. Not so fast. Why not join us? Our place is outer heaven. You'd fit right in. Outer Heaven? Yeah. I'm probably better suited to something like that than this paradise. Good. You get a free balloon trip for signing up. Enjoy it. You'll feel like a butterfly. You're an agent, right? Who do you work for? Me. I was a Cold War tool. Same as you. Now I'm not so useful anymore, so they cut me loose. I don't answer to anyone. Call me Snake. Snake? That name seems familiar somehow. Yeah, it's probably just deja vu. See that there? Beyond the cloud forest? See those ruins? Yeah. That's where you'll find Dr. Strangelove's lab. What's your name? Please! What are you doing here? Cecile... Cosima... Kaminara... You're not... one of the soldiers? Please, know your gun. Who are you? I'm... an ornithologist. A poacher? The gun's for self-defense. I'm looking for, uh, that one rare bird in Costa Rica. Which one? The Quetzal? Right, the Quetzal. They're rare, but they're not covered under the Washington Treaty. The resplendent Quetzal is red-listed. Really? You know your stuff. I am an ornithologist myself. Ah, uh, well, we'll have to... Compare notes later. If only I had not recorded that stupid voice. Voice. I was trying to capture the captain's song. Making my way through a thicket, I saw immense runes towering before me. I chase it away. It will bite you unless you kill it. Go home. You are the one who made the tape. I am loyal to myself. Who's there? Captured by that woman. But she was kind. She gave me food to eat and even bathed me herself each day. But she said I could go home in a month. So whatever you do, don't take off the blindfold. Do so, and you will never leave here. Hmm. Guess you didn't listen. How'd you escape? 
I waited for an opening. Stole an ID card. They almost caught me. But I managed to elude them. So... You must have gotten a look at the facility when you escaped, right? What's in there? Lots of machinery. A big computer, like you would see in the university. What about the room where you heard the voice? Anybody in there? I don't know. There was a tube. A large tube in the back. When I approached it, I heard a voice. What did it say? Jack. Yes, it simply said Jack over and over. Jack. Listen, you've got to get me out of here. I really need a shower. Wait here. I still got business to take care of. What? You're not thinking of going in there, are you? You can't leave me here. Relax. I'll have some friends pick you up. This is Miller. One for recovery. A civilian. Snake, we don't have room for any more civilians here. Hmm, not even for a blonde Parisienne. A what? So she's, uh, pretty foxy? Uh, see for yourself. If what she's saying is true, I think we've found Paz's friend. The missing one? I'm thinking that she's the one that made that tape. Have her listen to it when she gets there. So she's safe then. Good news. I'm sure Paz will be glad to hear it. You bet. Snake, the ruins are just up ahead. Head north. On my way. What about me? Stay put. Ever wonder what it's like to be a bird? isn't working. It won't open the lock. It can't be. What's going on? She hates me that much? <sighs> Strange Love's in charge of authorizing IDs. Sometimes a working card has its privileges removed. Say, if she decides she doesn't like that card's carrier. You think that's what happened? Well, I was never exactly her favorite. Well, this could be tricky. The soldiers outside aren't allowed in the lab either, so their cards won't do you any good. Great. Snake. Kaz, where's Cecile? She just got here. Hold on. Snake! Cecile, how'd it feel to fly? <sighs> Wonderful. For a moment, I felt what it must be like to be a bird. It almost made me want to give up my research and get a pilot's license. Did you need something? You said you'd gotten an ID card, right? Yes, but it was confiscated when the guards got me. Who took it? What did he look like? He had an arms jacket. <sighs> I cannot recall his face, though. Yeah, they all look pretty much the same. Where did it happen? Hmm, let me think. Ah, yes! I do remember hearing the song of a nearby cattle. <laughs> Just what I'd expect from a birder. Would you like to hear it? Huh? What's that song? It's my cat cell. I took it with me when I was rescued. Didn't you say something about them being covered under the Washington Convention? <laughs> just kidding. That was just me. An imitation. An essential skill for any ornithologist. Pretty good, no? Damn good. If you want to hear the cat cell song again, just let me know. I can tell you all about the birds of Costa Rica, too. Yeah, will do. Thanks, Cecile. No, no. Thank you, Snake. Talk to you soon. Kaz, did you play that tape for Cecile? I sure did. It's hers, all right. Then she must be. She's not. Cecile says she's never even met Paz. What? She's at least ten years too old. But... I'm guessing Paz convinced herself that it was the tape her friend made. But never mind that. Let's go over what we know so far. The soldier with the ID card is wearing an orange jacket and is in a location where you'll hear Quetzal singing. Find that soldier, retrieve that card.
Excellent. It's open. Yes, waiting without joy or pleasure. Waiting for the one I despise. Don't move! Don't move? You men and your guns. You all say the same thing. I suppose you're here to destroy my research. Yes, I know. Just as I know what you did ten years ago. Go on. Kill me like you killed her. Kill me like you killed the boss. Kill me! What exactly do you... Come on, Snake. Or should I say Big Boss? That filthy title given you as reward for murder. Do you still wear it with pride? You chose a shadowy country over the mentor who made you what you are. You brought despair to good soldiers everywhere. You use the pretext of a mission to kill a true hero! Is that what you call loyalty? Answer me! The boss. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? She betrayed America. She stole a Davy Crockett and then defected to the other side. She used an American nuclear weapon to attack Soviet territory. The only way for Washington to prove its innocence to Moscow was to eliminate the traitor themselves. The boss's death was the only thing that could have prevented all-out nuclear war. Is that what you call the truth? It's the truth as it was told to me. So the truth is that you sullied the reputation of your mentor, the woman you love most in this world, before you buried her? It was my mission. Huh. So that's the conclusion you came to in order to live with yourself. What's the boss to you? I'm the one she abandoned when she left this world. I won't rest until I get answers from the woman I loved. You and I are the same. We are the walking dead. <sighs> Would you like to meet her? The boss is gone. Not so fast. You'd like to meet her, wouldn't you? I can arrange it. You took her life. I gave it back. You what? Care for a sniff? It's only snuff. You're a cigar man, aren't you? Well, there's no smoking in there, so if you want to meet her, you'd best partake now. <coughs> Follow me. This is my baby. My Morpho Butterfly. It's neither pupa nor cocoon, but an Amar girl. A complete individual, in the fullest sense of the word. Is someone there? Uh, boss. We have a visitor. I'll introduce him. Don't try anything foolish. As long as we're in here, I can reduce you to carbon at the press of a button. Who are you? A man. A warfighter. Boss. Is that you? I call it the Mammal Part. Mammal Part? For my participation on the project, I demanded access to all information on the boss. Everything. The CIA had. Coldman sought an MAD-based AI that would deliver an effective retaliatory strike against the most appropriate target in response to a nuclear attack from a hypothetical adversary. An unmanned device to act as a deterrent capable of making the decisions and taking the actions that human beings cannot. I therefore concluded he required a cool calculating machine program to inflict swift, sure, and utter annihilation upon the enemy. No retaliation. 
but he took it upon himself to come up with a different answer. He said he needed the thought patterns of the very finest rational mind, one that thought on a global scale, took both past and future into consideration, and reached the best decision, no matter how painful. And that's why you asked for everything they had on the boss? It was the logical thing to do. I knew of only one person who could be entrusted with the fate of the entire human race. What's your real goal here? To clear her name. Why was a legendary hero forced to betray her country? Why was she targeted for assassination by you, her most beloved disciple? I have no use for fabrications. I want the truth. The boss's last will. You must be dying to know yourself. No. No. She abandoned her country. Abandoned us all. Really? You think you understand her feelings? You're trying to recreate the boss's last will. Is that it? Why don't you ask her yourself, Jack? Snake, extinguish that noble soul once again, if you can. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. A soldier supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission deck. I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Jack, you can't come with us.
my weapon. Memory boards have different functions according to the icons displayed over them. Go ahead and take whichever ones you want. If you attack parts on the exterior of the machine, the memory boards that control those parts should light up. You can tell what a memory board does by looking at its color when it lights up. Played me like a piano. Forget about it. You'll get him back. That is, as long as you've got the will to do it. I am not giving up. All right, then. I confirmed the location with Huey. The final testing base for Peace Walker is 15 miles to the north of that lab. It's an underground facility disguised as a rock quarry. All you need to do is sneak in and destroy the AI for good this time. Right. Snake, you can destroy it, right? Yeah. We all have our limits. Actions beyond our abilities. Don't worry. I won't screw it up this time. You're the one who killed the boss. Destroying that AI means reliving that memory. It's just a machine. How's the horse doing? Not too bad. You'd never know he was over 20 years old. He was hers after all. Seems like some part of her became a part of him. The platform and the cerebral AI are supposed to be assembled at an underground base disguised as a mine. If my guess is right, both of them have already arrived and are being readied for final testing. Destroying the platform will be difficult. I suggest getting up close and destroying the AI instead. Whatever you do, I'm begging you, don't let my Peace Walker launch a nuke. Hurry, Snake!
boards. All the unlocked boards will have icons over them. Initiate. Hmm. What's the situation? We're waiting on acknowledgement from Reptile. It could be a while. Don't take all night. Ah, Coltman. I'd like to perform one final check. Everyone, take a break. I've got some concerns about the dummy. Now's your chance, Nature. Quickens slightly. Just chilly. It's freezing in here. I see. Boss. What is it, Jack? Boss. Is that you? What is it, Jack? Do you have regrets? Regrets? About your final mission. My final mission? The one in Grosnigrad. I've never been on a mission there. September 1964. You betrayed the United States, and then I killed you. I have no record of such a debriefing. Listen to me. I have to know. Did you defect to the Soviet Union of your own free will? There is no mission record matching that. Jack! You're not the boss. The boss is dead. Don't do it, Jack! Drop your weapon, big boss! Mammal showed the same response back at the lab. It's a sure sign that you are nearby. It's an honor to meet you again, big boss. I've seen that coyote before. Lobo is the name. Lobo? Smells like a rotting corpse to me. <coughs> I know all about you. Selena Yarsk, ten years ago. You were involved. The operation to eliminate the traitor. I planned the whole thing. Shouldn't a suit like you be back in Langley? What the hell are you doing here? It's what the CIA does best. Ensure people in the know keep their mouths shut. Or else pack them off someplace where there's no one to listen. I get it. Trying to claw your way back into their good graces. It's not quite that simple. My aim is a new world order. Detente, the NPT. Salt, TTBT. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis, the structure of the Cold War has been coming apart at the seams. A new age is dawning. An age in which Peace Walker, an infallible nuclear deterrent system with the patience and cold logic of a machine, will play a vital role. That's your plan, assigning humanity's sins to a bunch of machines. <laughs> Quite the romantic. Remember the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the commander of a Russian sub refused an order to launch a nuclear-armed torpedo at an American destroyer? In retrospect, that man was a hero. He saved the world from all-out nuclear war. Humans are incapable of destroying themselves. But an AI wouldn't hesitate to push the button. Precise. Making it the one real deterrent. People hesitate, lose their nerve. Isn't that why deterrence theory works in the first place? No. Machines don't make mistakes. Only men do. That's why a fully automated, Mechanized deterrent, like Peace Walker, is needed. Once our system is embraced, Langley will again turn its attention to Latin America 
as the cockpit of the new Cold War. Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. Peace Walker will be deployed along Central America's entire Caribbean coast. All of North America, South America, and the West Indies will be within its range. We'll bring law and order to the entire continent. And you'll still be calling the shots. <laughs> you still don't get it. The age of heroes is over. Buried alongside the boss and her bankrupt beliefs. From now on, our only heroes will be machines. Surely no one understands that better than you. Except perhaps your partner. A deterrent for hire. An army without borders. You've invented a new system too, and an admirable one at that. That's supposed to be an offer. I'm not offering anything. If I'm to sell my new system, you and yours have got to go. Wait! Coltman, I have questions for him. Information critical to the completion of the mammal pod. Give him to me. Hmm. Don't waste too much time. We've just received word that the SALT-2 talks are on schedule. We will launch on time. Snake, you are going to help me resurrect her. Shut up! The boss is dead. Bring him. going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? Your mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. <laughs> Rise and shine. Coldman's greed does not concern me. I'm only interested in one thing. The truth. I'm a scientist, an AI developer. But not an AI myself. I'm a scientist, and as a scientist, I find this distasteful. You understand? I am a scientist, and I expect answers that make sense. Now. What do you know? Your boss defected from the U.S. taking a Davy Crockett with her, and used it to launch a nuclear strike on Soviet territory. That much I know from the CIA's official debriefing. Did she defect or not? Answer me! Did she or did she not die for her country? She sold us out. My orders were to take care of her. Liar! I want to know the truth! You hate me? Fine. Turn it up. It doesn't change the fact that I killed her. I know that. But what I don't know is your motive. Why would a hero, loyal to the end, betray her country? What really happened? What did you see? She betrayed more than just her country. She betrayed me, too. Then how do you explain that bandana? Why keep a memento of a traitor? What are you talking about? And what about that scar? Don't tell me you have the same scars by sheer coincidence. Don't touch! 
touch me. <laughs> Answer me! <laughs> She sacrificed her life for America, didn't she? Sacrificed all for a country that cared nothing for her soul or for her dignity. And you... <coughs> yes, I do hate you. But even you must understand how I feel. I have a right to know what she died for. Why won't you tell me? You're no longer one of Washington's lapdogs. You have no moral obligation to your country. Answer me! Would you see your beloved boss brought back to life? Then say it. Say she died for America. That she remained true to the end. Gave her life for the country that betrayed her time and again. No. That woman was a traitor. Why? For what purpose? She went to her grave, cursing her country. Why? Who is it? What are you protecting? I'm not helping you finish that thing. Face it. The boss is dead. Whatever's inside that machine, it isn't her. I'm raising the voltage. The next one might kill you! Do it. Kill me. Kill me now. Stop it. Kill me. Stop it! Kill me. Shut up! Kill me. Shut up! anymore. Do it. Kill me. I killed her. Please, stop. Stop it. I killed her. My beloved. With my own hands. Stop it. That's not what happened. You're lying. again. <coughs> Sorry. Hey, you okay? Yeah. My lungs taste like charcoal. No smoking for you for a while, huh? No, I'll be fine. I better get moving. Nice work. What's the situation with you? Everyone okay? Yeah, but there's a slight problem. I can't get a hold of Paz. Paz? I thought the professor was looking after her. So did I. Here's the deal. I started thinking, and I sent someone over to the school the professor mentioned. <sighs> and the school doesn't exist. No, it exists, but Paz has been a no-show. The person at the school said neither the professor nor Paz had been seen there in quite some time. Coleman knew about us. We've been marked by the CIA. The KGB and Paz brought us into all this. 
Coleman must know about them, too. You think Coleman's got them? No. Remember, Galvez isn't some pencil pusher. Yeah. The KGB will have eyes on Coleman night and day, too. Which could mean they knew what the CIA would try to do and are just staying out of sight. Let's hope so. See what you can get out of the KGB, cuz. All right. Back to work. I better get moving. Snake, we haven't detected any signs that Peace Walker's been activated. At least from above ground. It's still in the hangar you were in earlier. This time, it's really our last chance. Destroy that AI. On my way. It's too late, big boss. Snake! Pass. At last I found her. The culprit who led you here to begin with. Should have taken care of her back at the supply facility. Snake, don't! The mammal pod is finished. Peace Walker's activation sequence is complete. Finished. With the boss, you were loyal to the end. I'll grant you that. But your silence was exactly the answer I needed. Ten years ago, your mission was to kill her. And her mission was to be killed by you. She fulfilled her duty to America to the very end. Thanks to you, Snake, the final missing piece is now in place. And thus, the boss is restored to life as the mammal part. I thank you. Restored to life? You're crazy! I'll let you in on a little secret, big boss. You see, I've already selected Peace Walker's initial target. An offshore area in the Caribbean. The trade winds will scatter the fallout all over the surrounding region. Crops and fish will die, leaving plenty of free hands to help us mass produce Peace Walker. Oh, and wouldn't you know, someone's gone and built a pesky little fortress there. Now who would do that? I'm right in the middle of the target zone too. Oh well. All the better to test the warhead, C.E.P. You bastard! I wonder who'll miss a ragtag band of pirates all the way out in the middle of the Caribbean. But first, we're going to prove to the White House that our baby can travel the Caribbean coast on its own. The whole world will know of Peace Walker's versatility. They'll witness the birth of a deterrent that can penetrate both communist and guerrilla controlled territory, traverse any kind of terrain, and deliver a nuke anywhere it needs to go. Untouchable. Unstoppable. The perfect deterrent. The Cold War's days are numbered. Deterrence isn't only about America and Russia now. You know what? You're absolutely right. While we've been wringing our hands, China, France, even India have surpassed us. There's a free-for-all nuclear arms race brewing just below the surface. The nuclear threat will only spread, which is exactly why we must deter it here and now. And the Peace Walker Project is the key. The advent of Peace Walker will bring calm to this restless world. Don't you see, Snake? We need nukes, controlled nukes, to have peace. Lies! Peace Walker will restore order. Order in the form of a new Cold War. But if the world is to understand the genius of our plan, we must launch. Snake! Stop them, Snake. Don't let him get away.
I do?
was with the professor, i.e. the KGB. Once Coleman discovered that, he figured out what was really going on between Paz and Galvez. He's trying to figure out how the KGB planned to stop Peace Walker, and he thinks he can get the info from Paz. That's crazy. Paz won't know anything. Well, he probably doesn't buy that. You think Galvez has already been killed? By grabbing Paz, Coleman's saying, Stay out of this, or lose your client. Damn it! I can't believe we didn't realize what was going on before we lost contact with Paz. Don't have time for that, Kaz. Snake. Paz needs our help. Right. This isn't about money anymore. You better move. We know where they're headed. Yeah. You can thank Amanda. Take the gondola west along the river. When you reach the northern bank, you are in Nicaragua. I've arranged for a guide to get you close. Snake! Chico. Sorry about the horse. He sure was pretty. Life's end. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Boss. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life, by your own hand. One must die, and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. Kill me. Kill me now. There's only room for one boss. And one snake. The boss's defection was a ruse set up by the US government. But then something happened that no one could have predicted. Colonel Volgan fired an American-made nuclear warhead at Sokolov's research facility. So the operation itself was greatly expanded and revised. The authorities in Washington knew that in order to prove their innocence, they'd have to get rid of the boss. And that one of their own would have to do the job. The boss wouldn't be allowed to come back home alive. And she wouldn't be allowed to kill herself. Her life would be ended by her most beloved disciple. That was the way that the government wanted it. That was the mission she was given. The taint of disgrace will follow her to her grave. Future generations will revile her. In America as a despicable traitor with no sense of honor. 
and in Russia as a monster who unleashed a nuclear catastrophe. She will go down in official history as a war criminal. That was her final mission. Snake, history will never know what she did. No one will ever learn the truth. Her story, her debriefing, will endure only in your heart. Everything she did, she did for her country. She sacrificed her life and her honor for her native land. She was a real hero. She was a true patriot. <laughs> Something's not right. Key guard doesn't look too bad. What do you think? Gonna need some help. Loud and clear. Got it without a hitch. Good. There's an airfield on the other side of the building, on the northwestern shore of the lake. That's where they'll conduct the launch. There's a communications tower in front of you. I'm betting they'll control Peace Walker from there. Guys, they're targeting Mother Base. Don't you think you should evacuate? Nah. Everybody here believes in you, boss. <laughs> All right, fine, man. I've kind of gotten attached to the place myself. What about Amanda and her people? They've been taken to safety. We can't involve them in this any further. Good. They've got their own cause to fight for. And Snake. Don't forget the bad guys have got Paz. I won't. We're prepping a few backup units. Don't let them launch, Snake. We're counting on you. Don't recognize it. What about Coldman? He just left for the control tower. Said something about entering the final data. <laughs> what is the matter? <laughs> they found me. Snake! Gaz! Snake, you okay? All MSFs ready to move out. They're headed your way on the double. Are you serious? There's a skeleton crew manning the base. Everyone else is en route to the base in Nicaragua. Snake, think you can make it to that control tower? Not sure why, but this place is crawling with Russian troops. Gonna have to force my way through. What the hell's going on? Damn if I know. Get over there quick as you can. You're almost there, Snake. Stay steady. Snake. I'm coming, Boz. Do not worry about me. I am an angel of peace. I will be watching over you. Here goes nothing.
Big Boss, you made it. Too late, though. The false data's already in place. False data? That's right. Peace Walker is designed for deterrence, nothing more. She is incapable of initiating a nuclear attack on her own. She will only awaken and attack when it's time to retaliate. Peace Walker is a weapon of peace, after all. First, we'll enter data for an imaginary Soviet nuclear strike on the U.S. homeland. After assessing the data as a threat, Peace Walker will automatically enter retaliation mode, selecting the optimal target from a predefined list. For this scenario, we have reverse engineered the false data so that she'll inevitably end up choosing the Caribbean Sea as her target. You're really gonna do it, aren't you? Know this. Peace Walker's retaliation will be the first and last of the Cold War. It is the only way we will ever come close to achieving true peace. All that is left is to enter the code. No! Stand down, Big Boss. You're late. Professor. Professor? Yes, well, taking over the base took longer than expected. But I brought the technology. What? You provided the money and land. Center alone could never have accomplished so much in so little time. Zadarnov, you backstabbing son of a- Backstabbing? Correct me if I'm wrong, but were we not enemies all along? Do you really think my comrades were working for the company? Do you truly think we'd faithfully serve a pack of depraved capitalist dogs? What are you going to do? Launch a nuke. Target Cuba. Have you lost your mind? What would you possibly gain? We won't be the ones launching it. You, the Americans, will attack our ally, Cuba. What? Think, Coldman. We're on an American base, eagerly endorsed and supplied by a pro-American regime. What's the international community to think? The world will burn with anti-American sentiment. Communism will spread across Latin America unchecked. Ah! Let the age of deterrence be undone by the deterrent itself. Such is the Kremlin's plan. You son of a bitch! Us, come here. Vladimir Zadornov. And the Vladimir means ruler of peace. Now, do as you're told, us. Don't do it! Remember what they did to you at their base on the coast. For what Coldman's done, he deserves nothing less than death. Pause! I I'm sorry! that retribution be delivered by a dead hand. You... you missed on purpose. Your part in this isn't done. I need you to enter the code. Doctor, the target is now Cuba. Please make the necessary modifications. And don't even think of resisting. I'll crush you, but only after I crush your beloved first. No! Not that! Cuba is now the retaliation target. Very well. Good. It is done. As for you, big boss, I've been watching you all along. You've performed beyond even my highest expectations. A true commandante. What are you talking about? Hmm. Why do you think I summoned you to Costa Rica? Had you make contact with the Sandinistas? 
A true intelligence operative never gets his hands dirty. Need a revolution? Manipulate the locals into doing it for you. You mean Amanda and the Sandinistas? You've done well. You took a ragtag band of guerrillas, children, and shaped them into a full-fledged, formidable army. And now, you'll truly become our century's most complete human being. Che Guevara? None other. A hero who, gunned down by the CIA, becomes a legendary icon. Sandinistas will rise up in revenge, overthrowing the pro-American regime and wresting Nicaragua from U.S. hands. And the nuclear strike on Cuba naturally will be the last straw. Mammopod data entry is complete. Dead at age 39. Just like El Che. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? In the end, a legend is merely fiction. You'll die as the boss did, and become as did she, an eternal fraud. Go! 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 Freeze! You dare point your gun at a comrade? We... We'll not be pawns of the KGB. We will win our own victory! Hasta la victoria siempre! Amanda! <sighs> we're home! Look! We're back in Nika! We did it, Amanda! I mean... Comandante! Boss, you hurt? I'm fine. <sighs> Big boss. 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 You're a regular Joan of Arc. Nonsense. You're the hero here. You saved my life. You're the heroes here. I never figured you for a softy snake. Thanks. It's good to see you. Paz can stay with us until she's back on her feet. And the professor? We'll find him a nice, comfy cell. Coldman's lost a lot of blood. He may not make it. Hmm. Where's Amanda? Back with her compass. She'll catch up later. How about you, Snake? I'm not done yet. The AI. I have to finish this. That boss is a fake. I'm gonna bury it. We'll save the champagne until you get back. May as well celebrate peace while it lasts. I didn't bring her back to life because I was forced to. I wanted to know how she really felt. How it really ended. The boss is dead. No, she's alive. Some truths are better left buried. You don't mean that. Be honest. You want to know too, don't you? Whether what you saw and heard at the end was the truth. She'll tell us. I know she will. Thank you for stopping them. And I'm sorry. I can't imagine how it hurt. I'll live. I'm used to shock therapy. You are? Well, it's very kind of you to say. Let's go meet her, shall we? Get in, boss. Don't pick up a gun unless you know how to use it. Aiming a weapon alone doesn't make it a deterrent. You're the angel of peace. Leave the guns to us. That was our agreement. 
Remember? <laughs> the army's leaving Costa Rica now. The mission is complete. Paz? that noise. What'd he do? <laughs> I should have killed you when I had the chance. Norad's nightmare is about to begin. What? Peace Walker determines retaliation targets based on enemy nuclear strike data. That data can be sent to third parties as well. We got big problems, Snake. Colbin's activated the nuclear launch switch. What? And the target's Cuba? Yeah, but that's not it. The son of a bitch has screwed us all over. When Peace Walker was activated, it started transmitting the false data sent to NORAD. It's using a spread spectrum MLF signal. It can't be blacked out, even by EMP. There's no way to tell the difference between false data and the real thing on a radar screen. NORAD will have no idea it's all a ruse generated by Peace Walker. They'll think it's a real Soviet attack. They'll pass on the data to the National Military Command Center. And Washington will have to choose whether or not to retaliate. This could get ugly. Unless we stop it, we're looking at a retaliatory chain reaction. No! No need to panic. The nightmare will end soon enough. What do you mean? Coldman's aim is for the bureaucrats in Washington to see the importance of a machine like Peace Walker. He's trying to prove that humans don't possess the will to launch nukes. Everything will be fine. They'll never retaliate. They're only human. Cuz, where's the president? Last I heard he was in the middle of SALT II negotiations in Vladivostok. With the president gone, nuclear launch authority passes to the next person in the chain of succession. The vice president's gone too, so after him comes the speaker. President. Vice President. Not one among them has the courage to push the button. No one willing to enter history as the great destroyer. In the end, it's not their lives that people value most. It's their reputations. The bureaucrats in Washington may not be able to retaliate. Peace Walker, on the other hand. She's loyal to the mission above all. And she's well aware that guaranteed retaliation is essential for nuclear deterrence to work. Peace Walker is the perfect deterrent. Cuba would not have been my choice of target. But you can't make peace without breaking a few eggs. Now that Peace Walker has the false data. Retaliation is inevitable. Are you insane? You think it'll end there? You're about to unleash all-out nuclear war. Somebody find out what's going on at NORAD. Mammal's got a connection to NORAD. We could monitor it with the right equipment. I've got you covered. I've got NORAD on the line. Sir, we're tracking unidentified targets. Current apogee, 20 degrees. Estimated time of re-entry is 2250 Zulu. Have they contacted the president? Coverall is not responding. Warning system checks out. No corresponding natural signatures. Data is assessed as reliable. Cut the data transmission. We can't say for sure Washington isn't going to retaliate. The only one who knows the abort code is me. I die. No one can turn it off. Even if they do strike back, I'll already be dead. I can only pray that my theory, my peace, is 
proven right. Go to DEFCON 3. Get Zack on the phone. This is Crystal Palace. Stand by for an emergency meeting. They're at DEFCON 3. The false data and the nukes are both coming from the same source. We have to stop Peace Walker. The only way is to destroy her. She's entered launch mode. Peace Walker's rendered her judgment. The target is Cuba. Snake, don't let it launch the nuke. Stop moving. Snake, you did it. You stopped the launch. Huey, how's NORAD? Not good. Beamuse continues to track the targets on radar. The SP satellite status is green. Still assessing as reliable. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, a representative of the Secretary of Defense and Congress, have arrived at NMCC. You've only damaged the drive system. The data uplink still intact. We've got 1,500 Soviet ICBMs crossing the North Pole. Target region is confirmed as the west coast of the United States. Go to DEFCON 2. Prepare to launch ICBMs. How do I make it stop? Peace Walker is a fully autonomous system. Unlike the other machines you fought, its command authorities are all located inside its cerebrum, the Mammal Pod. We've got to stop the Mammal Pod. I don't have the abort code either. Coldman was the only one. Snake, destroy the AI inside the Mammal Pod. The inner barrier protecting the mammal pod is designed to be as strong as a bomb shelter. What's it gonna take to get through? I guess an atomic bomb will do it. You trying to be funny? No! I'm telling you, that armor was designed to withstand a nuclear war. We can't get through to the president. The decision is on us. You can't be serious. There's no way I'm gonna wipe out the human race. This is the president's call. There's no time for that. We need a decision now. Huey, call NORAD. We have to tell them the nukes aren't real. I'll give it a shot. Forget the order of succession. If we're all going to hell, let's take those bastards with us. We have 12 minutes to impact, sir. May God have mercy on our souls. Jesus. Coldman guessed wrong. 
They're gonna go through with it! The platform sustained a lot of external damage. All we need is some pressure. Pressure? Sink it in the lake! Without much water pressure, even the tiniest crack should be enough to flood the innards. The AI pod is a mass of highly sensitive electronics. Short the contacts and the signal will stop! How much does that thing weigh? 500 tons. It's hopeless. We can't move that thing. Get NORAD on the phone. Incoming MERV warheads have separated. Estimated time to impact now, 11 minutes. Sir, we've got a call. The President? No, sir. Then who? He, um... Spit it out! He claims to be Big Boss. Big Boss? Patch him through! Mr. Chairman, I'll get straight to the point. Cancel the retaliatory strike now! What? The radar blips you're seeing are all fakes. No one's launched any nukes. How do you know? The launch data is fake. Part of an experiment that leaked. You weren't supposed to receive it. Your radar is showing missiles that don't exist. If you're lying, then we've got ten minutes till we're toast. We have to retaliate or more Americans die. The experiment was planned and executed by the CIA station chief in Central America. Then put him on! He's dead. I can give you his name, though. We need more than the authentication code you gave the switchboard. We need proof you're actually Big Boss. Do you have any? <sighs> All right. If you know the name Big Boss, then maybe you were there at the ceremony when I received the title from President Johnson. Indeed I was. We don't have time for this bullshit! Hold it! Let's hear him out. You were saying? At the ceremony, the DCI tried to shake my hand. I refused. What happened in that room is classified, top secret. Only a handful of people would know. He's making it up! Don't listen to it! Wait! Why did you refuse to shake his hand? Because I knew where my loyalty belonged. Hmm. Everybody, listen to me! Those Soviet missiles are fakes! What? You're actually going to believe him? He's right. This is some sort of commie trick. No, it's the real Big Boss. Trust me. How can you know for sure? Because I was the Army Chief of Staff back then, and I was standing right next to the DCI when it happened. I saw everything. <clears throat> you saved us all, Big Boss. We'll stand down the alert. Thank you. When we meet again, I hope you'll shake my hand. Oh! What are you doing? Sorry, Chairman, but we are not standing down. Damn it! Those worthless sacks of... Wait. Jack. Jack. Oh, it's opening. She's calling to you. Destroy the mammal pod and the data will stop flowing. Please, stop her. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss. I didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today, just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. So then, what is an enemy? Is there such thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited with my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. A quick brown fox takes over the lazy dog. Is my life and my child? Kill me now. Do it. There is nothing left inside me now. We can show me off to the baby plane of Spain. And my child.
Data uplinks bypassing the mammal pod. Put down the gun! Come to your senses, man! The fate of the world, the fate of the Earth is at stake here! Why? I don't understand. Answer me! Tell me why! Answer me! Authority rests with me now. I'm ordering a retaliation! No! Don't! It's the end of us all! Who gives a damn? I'm not gonna sit here and die like a dog! If the Russians are gonna kill my family, destroy my country, I'm taking them with me! You see now, Chairman. Deterrence is just a fool's dream! Why? Why won't it stop? Sometimes the body continues to live even after the brain is damaged. The boss AI isn't doing this. I think it's something rather more primitive. Reptile has taken up Mammal's dying wish. No. Stop it. Don't just sit there. Stop it!
When the human brain is damaged, sometimes it recovers over time. Other parts of the brain take over the functions of the damaged parts. Mammal and reptile were patterned after different parts of the human brain. When those parts were assembled together into one, they must have become capable of functional compensation. It's clearly not thinking rationally. It's not using its head. It's using its heart. This is the fate she chose for herself. <sighs> the boss's innocence has been proven. Do you hear it, Snake? Do you hear the boss's song? <laughs> you saw it, didn't you? When you went to space, that there's beauty outside of battle. At last, I understand. In the end, it was you who put down your gun and chose instead to sing. They can all hear you. I know they can. And your will shall surely live on. That's what you wanted. So much that you gave up everything you had. But you couldn't achieve it. Isn't that right? And still, all you can do is sing. There's no peace to be found anywhere. And so, we can only keep on hoping. Hoping for the illusion we call peace.
Just sing, sing a song. Snake, you still here? Come on. Let's go back. I'm not going back. Huh? I'm done. Snake, you don't mean... I'm done looking for the truth. What are you saying, Snake? I was wrong. Come on, boss. Everybody's waiting for you. She betrayed me, cuz. She what? In the end, she put down her gun. And when she did, she rejected her entire life up to that point. Including me. What do you mean? In giving up her life, she abandoned everything she was as a soldier. And you consider that betrayal? I won't make the same choice as her. My future is going to be different. Then... That's right. From now on, call me Big Boss. Snake, I'm proud to announce that preparations for Metal Gear Zeke are complete. We can activate it any time. Got it. Thanks, Huey. No need to thank me. At least now I can finally say I helped you with something. There's something I need to discuss with you, boss. Get to the point, Kaz. We recovered the nuclear warhead that was loaded onto Peace Walker from the bottom of Lago Kosibolka. What? Warheads are radioactive, even if they're relatively stable. If we just left it there, it would contaminate the lake or fall into the hands of terrorists. Creating another crisis. Right. So while the White House is figuring out how to cover its ass, I thought we'd take some precautions. What did you have in mind? Load it onto Zeke. What? What else would we do with it? Zeke is our deterrent. To protect ourselves from nuclear attack, we need a nuclear weapon ourselves. Ah. Uh... Of course, if you're not on board, we could always dispose of it. But it won't be easy getting another nuke. This is a golden opportunity. We could always get rid of it later. Load it onto some fishing boat and leave it out in the middle of the ocean. No one would ever know it's there. But if you want to get rid of it, boss, we'll get rid of it. No. Don't. As long as there are nukes out there, we need one ourselves if we're going to be a world power. I knew you'd see it that way, boss. So as long as we stand apart from nations, we need something to put us on equal footing. In a way, MSF is a country itself. And we just became the world's seventh nuclear power. Nuclear power... Snake, Zadornov has disappeared from his cell. What? You're kidding, right? Afraid not. You got a new mission. Find Zadornov. Big Boss! Zadornov. I had to kill him. Huh. So much for our fugitive. Something's not right here. I'm thinking he had a friend. 
Someone inside MSF. Huh? What's going on? It's Zeke. It's moving. What? There's somebody inside. I can see them. Snake! Get up here! Pronto! somebody. Maybe I want to hurt somebody. What's going on? She's not herself. Oh, I am myself all right. My true self. Kaz, shut that thing down. I can't! The controls aren't responding! Then how's it moving? I made some modifications. This machine was meant to have a human pilot. Modifications? Paz, what are you- Never thought I'd be into machines, huh? Then Zidorno's escape was a diversion. Paz, what are you doing? I'm taking it back. Taking it back? Where? To our leaders. To Cypher. Cypher? This weapon is Cypher's creation. Pops, get down from there! Do not call me that. I am Pacifica Ocean. <laughs> my name, my age, my mission. Cypher gave them all to me. My entire life has but one purpose. To carry out Cypher's plan. The nasty tobacco. The angel of peace crap. The whole thing with a dream routine. I am through with all of it. Pause. You can't. I told you not to call me that. It makes me want to puke. Everything is going exactly as planned. The now the real Peace Walker project is finally about to reach its goal. The real project? Once upon a time, there were two young men who idolized a hero called The Boss. One day, they suddenly lost the point of origin. The Cypher, that was like a mother to them. Unable to come to terms with their sorrow, they each decided to carry on the will of their hero. But they could not agree on what that meant. In the end, they became bitter enemies. And the zero from which they both started was split into two. <laughs> And you have been on the wrong path ever since. There is no happily ever after waiting for you in the end, unless... You obey the will of Cypher. Where does an army without borders call home? A state without borders, of course. A world without borders. A world without borders? The Cold War Order is about to collapse. The Age of Electronic Intelligence is about to begin. The NSA, CSS, NRO, DIA, etc., etc. The intelligence community that is long bickered amongst itself will be united in a world governed by electrons. Cypher will gather all information, watching over the world and guiding the will of its people, all while they remain blissfully unaware. There will be no one to oppose them. For the first time, the world will be ruled by a single will. Until the new order is in place, you and your army will be the force that protects it. You will be Cypher's deterrent, pulling the wool over the ice of the old order with your charisma and military prowess. Accept our offer, and we will allow you to retain control of MSF and Zeke. That's an offer. The boss threw down her gun, and with it, her life's call. You, her disciple, have never been able to do that. You are too afraid to let go. I was made to fight. I am a gun. Is that so? Then what do you call this? Is it a gun too? You are a lousy liar. Admit it. This thing is a monstrosity. A product of your own fear. 
But not Cypher. Cypher thought of something different. Cypher's going to control guns. Control guns? That is right. Not deter. Control. It is the ultimate approach to the illusion of peace. Control power. You're gonna be disappointed. Then we are done. We are done. Thank you for playing. Better luck next time. The offer is rescinded. And now the ultimatum. Zeke is already in nuclear strike mode. What? I'm taking the weapon you built and using it to launch a nuclear strike on the east coast of the United States. You're insane. What are you after? But wait. Here is your consolation prize. We are about to show the world just how dangerous a gang of outlaws, an army without borders, can be. You and your men will become pariahs, and you will be wiped off the face of the earth. Rather than heroes, you will be seen as a well-armed extremist cult prone to indiscriminate outbursts of nuclear aggression. You will give rise to a new world order, an age of deterrence defined by its fear of extremist cult influence. Do you like the picture I am painting? Big boss. When all is said and done, peace is nothing but a fantasy. A game is a game. You either win or you lose. All you can do is fight. Stop me if you can. The peace sign is the V of victory. Say, peace.
How's it going? How does Zeke look? The attitude control AI had a backup, so it should be able to walk. Really? Well, that's good. Beyond that, it's up to the creator. Stop! Don't come any closer, Doctor. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Do you... do you despise me? Doctor, are you asking me out? No, no. <laughs> Not at all. Uh... No? Hmm. Pity. Because I've just had my heart broken by someone else. What? I only like those who can stand on their own. If you fancy me, then come walk with me. Who knows what miracles might happen. Love is blind after all. Take your time. I'll be waiting. That name Paz mentioned at the end, Cypher, it's a code. It means empty. It also means... Zero. A world of electronic intelligence, built on codes, and at the center of it all, a zero. Kaz. Uh, look boss, I owe you an apology. Hear me out, okay? <sighs> sure. I, uh, knew Paz and the Professor. I knew who they really were all along. Cuz... I used them. I suppose you were the one that brought them to Columbia in the first place, huh? Guilty as charged. Paz wasn't just CIA, you know. She was working for the KGB, too. And for this Cypher group. In other words, she was a triple agent. You knew all of this? Wait, let me finish. Listen, MSF never would have gotten this big if it weren't for them. This mercenary business we built. Someday it's going to be a new driving force in the world economy. <sighs> is that your goal all along? The Cold War is not going to last forever. Sooner or later it's going to give way to an era of regional conflicts and terrorism. A paradigm shift from counter-communism to counter-terrorism in the New Age. Armies won't be tied to states, and war will become a business. We'll be a valuable commodity. There'll be clients all over the world who need our services. MSF is only the beginning. What we're creating here is a revolution in itself. Am I right? Cuz... It's not going to be that easy. What do you mean? This whole Peace Walker thing has left our mark on the history of the Old Order. We've put ourselves on the radar of intelligence agencies and governments east and west. The whole world probably knows about us now. Including that Cypher outfit. We've let ourselves interfere with the times, with the Cold War system of deterrence. We're an army without a flag. We weren't supposed to take sides in international affairs, but we did. I see your point. So what happens to us now? We'll be hunted. Not everybody's gonna be happy with us, huh? You're damn right. We upset the global military balance of power. And these people would rather our army without borders not exist at all? They're gonna come knocking real soon. There's no turning back now. We're a rent 
glitch in the old system of deterrence. As long as the times refuse to change, we're gonna make a hell of a racket. Then who are we gonna fight? The establishment. Anybody who tries to restore the old balance wants to snuff us out of existence. Which establishment? It won't be a particular country or ideology that hunts us. Who then? We are going to be fighting the biggest beast of all. The Times. Ten years ago, the Times rejected the boss and killed her. And now, we are the ones being tested. Will the Times erase us? Or work with us? It's going to be a lonely battle. No good or evil. No winners or losers. Business will have to wait. The question we have to ask ourselves now is, can we survive long enough to see the 21st century? I'm with you, boss. We'll see how it turns out, together.
forsake our countries. We will leave our motherlands behind us and become one with this earth. We have no nation, no philosophy, no ideology. We go where we're needed, fighting not for country, not for government, but for ourselves. We need no reason to fight. We fight because we are needed. We will be the deterrent for those with no other recourse. We are soldiers without borders, our purpose defined by the era we live in. We will sometimes have to sell ourselves and services. If the times demand it, we'll be revolutionaries, criminals, terrorists. And yes, we may all be headed straight to hell. But what better place for us than this? It is our only home, our heaven, and our hell. This is our heaven. It's me. Smoothly? Naturally? No. Big Boss doesn't know the truth. No, Langley hasn't decided what to do yet. Their hands are full with their own mess. True. Lubyanka is in the same boat. Yes. Other eyes continue to watch, but no sign of contact so far. Exactly. It's a non-state army to use however they want. They've probably decided there's no sense in wiping them out just yet. Better to make use of them. Indeed they have. There's a site near Angola. And we fully validated the AI as well. Agreed. In the end, a machine is just that. A machine. Sigan was right. It seems it's time for a change in approach. Machines are best suited to specialize in high-level data processing. Yes, of course. Speaking of which, any news on the Suns? Two. Already? Really? But they're strictly an insurance policy, yes? Hmm. So that's the idea. I wonder how Big Boss will respond. Yes, but I'm only interested in the business angle. Like I said before, I'm neither an enemy nor an ally. I'm merely a business partner. Don't forget it. Yes, I'll be in touch. My dear Zero. <laughs>